A History of Social Media which started as individual websites and chat rooms for connecting people in the 1990s and early 2000s have now developed into tools for people to connect, create, advertise, and even conduct business. Social media applications or apps have grown into an ever-consuming part of the human experience. Now, let's take a journey into a history of social media. The 90s, the era that brought us entertaining TV like Full House. Everywhere you look, <laughs> oh, sorry. Or Home Improvement with Tim the Toon Man Taylor. And that one episode that featured the false reality one could create in Photoshop. <laughs> now watch this, if you press B, your breasts just get bigger and more torpedo-like. Roseanne, a comedy classic. In that episode where her sister Jackie develops an addiction that will eventually inflict us all. God, you never left this thing. You're addicted to the internet. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I've seen this before. I lost two friends to this. They were weak. They were weak. I am strong. And classic movies like The Truman Show where Jim Carrey plays a man that's trapped inside a reality TV show and everyone in his life is a paid actor. Before the 90s, most communication was either in person, telephone, or written by physical mail. However, by 1991, all of that would change. A man named Tim Berners-Lee would create the World Wide Web. This marked the beginning of online communication for the public. From there, the internet took off. Internet browsers like Netscape and Internet Explorer would launch for public use. Then, other websites started popping up. Among those websites were 6degrees.com and America Online, or AOL. Six Degrees is one of the first social media sites that allowed for users to list friends, family members, and acquaintances. And AOL would allow similar features, however, it also released an instant messenger. In the early 90s, national news programs were covering the internet as the digital age was creeping upon us. In 1994, on The Today Show, Brian Gumbel asked the most important question. Well, what Allison should know, what, what do you is say internet about Allison? anyway? Internet is uh, that massive computer right. network, the one that's becoming really big now. What do you mean? That's big? What you, how does one, not, what do you write to it like mail? No, a lot. What is the internet? Where is the internet? Who is the internet? And why is it so elusive? Let's not forget about Katie Couric's foretelling answer for her hesitancy to use the internet. I'm afraid that if I subscribe to something like internet, you would really be hooked. I would get hooked and I would never, you know, spend time with my family. The internet was still a place of mystery to most people. However, as the 90s progressed, more and more people would become aware of what it had to offer. In 1997, AIM was released, which allowed for users to chat with others in chat rooms. In 1998, Yahoo Pager was released, which changed its name to Yahoo Messenger in 1999. Also in 99, MSN Messenger and Zanga were released. MSN Messenger was an instant messaging application supported by Microsoft. Zanga started as a site for book and music reviews. However, it would update its format to allow web blogging and photo uploads. These early messenger applications in the 90s will become a blueprint for social media apps in the coming decade. Towards the end of the 90s, there were two classic movies that were based around meeting people online. And I'm talking about You've Got Mail, and The Matrix. One, a romantic comedy about two business rivals 
unknowingly falling in love with each other in an online chat room. Oh, that's nice. And The Matrix, a dystopian sci-fi where humanity is trapped inside a fake reality and very few people can awake from it. And if you would have watched both movies back then, you probably would have been wondering where the hell is this internet thing going to lead us? To a future where everyone finds their partners online or a world where we're all plugged into the system? Well, the answer was both. The 2000s. Oh yeah, the era with comedy movies referencing meeting people online, like Napoleon Dynamite. Phil, I'm gonna eat all the freaking chips, Kip. Napoleon, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. Yeah, stop being so jealous of your brother, Napoleon. In Eurotrip, a movie about a team named Scotty traveling across Europe to find a German girl he met online. The early 2000s saw a boom in online communication. More Americans were buying computers and online companies like AOL started showing commercials on television. And their discs were coming to your house. Regardless if you wanted them or not, everyone, and I mean everyone, had a stack of these discs in their home. Let's not forget about those Yahoo commercials yelling, Yahoo! And back to the video. In 2001, Black Planet was released by Omar Wasal. It was a social networking site mainly for African Americans. However, anyone could sign up. It was also one of the first social networking sites to allow page customization and music on the home page. It had forums such as current events, politics, relationships, religion, and other topics for users to discuss ideas. In 2003, a Canadian programmer named Jonathan Abrams launched Friendster, a website that allowed users to share messages, photos, videos, and events. It also allowed for some page customization. Within the first few months of release, it had garnered around 3 million members. It was one of the most popular networking sites in the early 2000s, until it was overtaken by its competitor, MySpace. Speaking of MySpace, in 2003, the site was released by Chris DeWolf and Tom Anderson, who became everyone's first friend on the site. The site allowed for users to create their own profiles and customize their home page. Also allowed for music to be played. And over time, MySpace would create a couple of celebrities like Tila Tequila, Kid Cudi, and J. Cole. It would even help Drake change his image from the actor from Degrassi to his music persona that would propel him into megastardom. Also in 2003, a business and employment networking site called LinkedIn was launched, a site where users can create professional profiles and build a network of business contacts. Also, companies could advertise their jobs and things they wanted to highlight to the LinkedIn community. In 2004, Mark Zuckerberg released Facebook, originally for Harvard students. However, the site would eventually allow for college students nationwide to join if they had a college email account. And by 2006, it allowed for anyone over the age of 13 to join the site. In 2005, a video sharing app called YouTube was launched. The first video uploaded to the site is titled Me at the Zoo, and it was uploaded by one of the founders named Jawed Kareem. YouTube was purchased by Google in 2006 for $1.65 billion. It wasn't long until videos would be uploaded to the site that would go viral and catch the attention of the mainstream. Videos like The Battle of Kruger, 
where a buffalo is attacked by lions and its herd comes to help it out. Or the Chinese Backstreet Boys singing that way. Chocolate Rain by Tezande, and of course, Hide Your Kids, Hide Your Wife, and Hide Your Husbands by Antoine Dodson. Let's not forget about the viral dance videos like The Stanky Leg, Do the Heisman, and Crank That by Soldier Boy. Also in 2005, Reddit was released as a site where users, also known as Redditors, can read news, participate in discussions, rate content, and create communities or subreddits. Also in 2005, MySpace was purchased by News Corporation, the company that owns Fox News, for $580 million. Between 2005 and 2008, MySpace was so popular that news media started to cover how addicting it was to teens and young adults. Even Casa Palmera, a rehabilitation center, wrote an article in 2007 about MySpace addiction. Here's a fun game to play. Type in MySpace Addict in YouTube search and find comedic videos from that time poking fun at the addiction. In 2006, Twitter was launched by Jack Dorsey and Biz Stone. Twitter is an application that allows users to post updates through text and media. Originally, users could only use 140 characters. However, that was revised to 280 characters in 2016. And as of 2023, remains the same. In 2007, presidential candidate Barack Obama became the first presidential candidate from a major political party to create a Twitter account. His official account at Barack Obama launched in March of 2007. In June of 2007, the first iPhone was released. It was the first phone with a fully interactive screen. This moment of time marked another change in society in which people would communicate. Also, the change in which we interacted with social media. Before the iPhone, people had to log in to their social media accounts from a desktop or laptop computer. When people didn't have a computer with them in public, they couldn't interact with their social media. However, all of that would change. By 2007, social media websites were available on early mobile devices as mobile websites, but the features were limited, like Facebook Mobile. In July of 2008, Apple launched the App Store. Is what we call the App Store. This is an application we've written to deliver apps to the iPhone. And now people could download their favorite apps to their phone, including social media apps. The way people would socialize was slowly starting to change. People would start to constantly check their phones for any social media updates, a habit that wasn't seen in the early 2000s. In 2009, WhatsApp was launched, an app that allows users to send and receive text and voice messages, photos, videos, and other media. It grew popular because it allows for users to communicate internationally without any extra charges. Shortly after the app launched, it gained 250,000 users. By 2009, LinkedIn reported roughly 55 million users. Facebook had 200 million users, which surpassed MySpace's 130 million users. Facebook became the new king of social media. Also in 2009, Twitter had 75 million users and quite a few celebrity accounts, media outlets, 
in large corporations, like Wendy's, a fast food restaurant, a company that lets the haters know they are about that action. The 2010s. The 2010s saw the rise of rappers whose music careers flourished online, on apps like SoundCloud, Spotify, and YouTube. Rappers like Chance the Rapper, Wiz Khalifa, Tyler the Creator, and Kendrick Lamar, a prodigy of Dr. Dre. And let this be the reminder that don't you ever forget about Dre. Ever. Now, pick up a pair of beats by Dre and let's get back to the video. We start the decade strong with the movie Project X. A movie about a group of high school boys that set out to organize a graduation party. However, word of the party spreads fast on social media, and it grows into a huge rave that garners the attention of the SWAT team and the local news, which inspired people in real life to attempt to throw Project X style parties and turn their relatively quiet suburban neighborhoods into a music festival free-for-all. In Houston, the trend took a fatal turn. After a Project X party invitation went viral on Facebook and Twitter, almost a thousand people showed up at this empty mansion. Stop the organizers and to stop this from happening. Criminal charges against the organizers of the huge Project P rave party last weekend. As the 2010s progressed, more people of all ages were signing up for social media. In the early 2000s, social media was mostly used by Generation X and Millennials. However, now the older generations, like the Boomers, were getting on. In the younger generation, Gen Z would be the first generation born into the growing social media age. In 2010, Instagram was launched, originally a photo sharing app. Early Instagram users would post pictures of their food, hikes, adventures, or events they attended. However, over time, people would use the app to flex their lifestyles. Amateur models and influencers would use the app to gain fame and sponsorship deals. In July of 2010, Facebook reached 500 million users. It was now the largest social media site in the world and still continued growing throughout the decade. And in May of 2011, LinkedIn became publicly traded on the US Stock Exchange, becoming the first social media site to go public. In July of 2011, President Obama hosted the first Twitter town hall, where he interacted with people over Twitter and answered questions, marking the first time in history a sitting U.S. president participated in a virtual town hall. 2012 was one of Facebook's best years. It became a publicly traded company on the U.S. stock market. It also reached 1 billion users, becoming the first social media platform to reach that amount. And it also purchased Instagram for one billion dollars. In January 2013, Vine launched a video sharing app limited to six seconds and played over on a loop. The limit allowed the average user to easily share and make a video on their smartphone. And this is where the Randy Orton RKO out of nowhere meme became so popular. The app quickly became popular with millennials. In February of 2014, Facebook purchased WhatsApp for $19 billion. At the time of purchase, WhatsApp had just over 450 million monthly active users. And by August of 2014, it had 600 million active users. In 2016, a Chinese tech company named ByteDance launched TikTok, a video sharing app similar to Vine. 
the app allows users to make 15 seconds to 1 minute videos. The app will grow in popularity among Gen Z and some younger millennials. Also in 2016, LinkedIn had grown to 460 million users and was acquired by Microsoft for $26 billion. In June of 2017, Facebook reached 2 billion users. By the end of the decade, most of us were hooked to social media. Like those drug addicted fish in that King of the Hill episode. Or those people plugged into the Matrix. Only if someone tried to warn us. The 2020s. With the start of 2020, the world was hit with a pandemic and everyone was quarantined for a year. Television shows that were normally filmed in front of a studio audience were now being filmed from the comfort of the host's home. During this period, social media usage increased significantly. In 2020, WhatsApp reached 1 billion users. In the top three countries that use the app are India, Brazil, and the United States. As of 2022, it is one of the top five most popular apps globally. In 2021, Facebook Incorporated changed its name to Meta Platforms. The change in name and branding was so that the company could be known for more than just Facebook and social media. Meta is now the parent company of the Metaverse. In 2021, TikTok reached 1 billion users, marking it one of the fastest growing social media apps in history. TikTok reached 1 billion users in just 5 years, while it took Facebook 8 years to reach that mark. The app continues to be one of the most used apps by Gen Z. In 2022, Elon Musk, the owner of Tesla, purchased Twitter. And in June of 2023, Twitter was rebranded as X, like X-Men. As of the making of this video, we're still in the early 2020s, and Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok are still the most used apps. And only time will tell if they will still be dominant by the end of the decade, or if other apps will emerge to replace them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe for more content. This concludes another episode of The Voice of Rhino.